we want to decrease the left property of our CSS wrapper. So we say left and then we give it a value of, we say, whenever you call the slide left function, just whatever the value of the left is, just decrease it by this value that we're going to pass. So we say left minus equal to, so we just append that to parent dot single image width plus pixels. So basically what we're doing is we say, once you're sliding this to the left, the amount of slide that we want per call of that function is slide this with an amount that is equal to the width of a single image width. That's why we gave it this single image width value here. So the, and the next fun, the next um, value that we're going to pass to the animate function is our wait time value. So we say parent dot wait time. So that is the duration of that animation. So since we passed it 2000 milliseconds in this instance, this sliding function here will take two seconds to complete. So when we slide into the left, it will take two seconds for everything from beginning to the end to take place. Okay. So now that so now that we've written the slide left function, let's go and write the slide right and then we'll test it out from there. We'll take it step by step. There's more to do in these functions, but we'll take it slowly so that everyone will understand. So let's copy the slide left function and then just change this slide left to slide right. So inside the slide right as well, since we called it by overwriting is this value by a parent, we know that when we say this, it actually means parent as well. So in this instance, when we're sliding to right, I'll show you what we're trying to do. When you slide this to the right, we actually, instead of decreasing the left value, we want to increase it. So we add more space to the left-hand side of the wrapper so that this whole wrapper will move to the right. Okay, so let's go back in our code and do that. So instead of minus here, we're going to say plus. Okay, now that we've set up the slide left and slide right function partially, we'll go back into our browser and then test that and see if we click on the left and right whether it works. So we've refreshed and we have this element here. Now you can see what we meant by appending the last element to the beginning of the list. So now when the function loads, it seems like we actually have a continuous carousel. I mean, that's just basically it's faking. We just, what we did was, I'll show you in the Chrome element, in the Chrome, I'll show you in Chrome F12 tools. So as you can see in our HTML, we laid out the images starting from logo one up till logo four. But if you can see what we did was after logo three here, we took the last element, which is logo four. We removed it from the bottom of the list and we appended it to the first so that we won't have like a blank gray space over here. It will seem like this whole thing is continuous. So let's click on the right and see whether we'll have the animation taking place. So we've clicked on the right. Yes, it animated. We clicked on the right again. So as you can see guys, we've reached the end of the list. So now what we wanted when we reached the end is to take the first element, append that here. So it will seem like we have a continuous carousel taking place. Let's try our left link and see if that slides the carousel to the right as well. So we click to the left on the left link. Yeah, and it seems like that's working as well. So now let's go back and fix the issue that we have of when we slide, keep sliding to the left or right, that when it reaches the end of the carousel, the carousel does not seem to be continuous. So how we're going to do that is we're going to make a check to see if the CSS left property is equal to the negative of a single image width. So back in our JavaScript file, we're going to do a check. Before we do any animation, we're going to do a check to see if if the wrapper has reached the end of its container. So we're going to say parent dot wrapper dot CSS and in the left property of the wrapper We're going to replace since wrap since the left property of CSS re returns a number with a p pixel appended to the end of it. We're going to replace px with an empty string. So we say replace, and then we're going to pass that string. Since when we replace the prop the value that's returned by left and replace it with px, it's actually a string. So we use JavaScript's pass int 
function and then we're going to pass that so we say pass int and then give put in the value that we've we've actually just calculated 